Hey there guys, so earlier today I had a question about how I built my team without gutting everything. So I'm going to go over each player and how I got them. This will include everyone important on my team as well as all of my top prospects. So let's first begin with our pitching and Luis Ulola. So he was the first overall draft pick a couple of years ago for the Aztecs and I ended up getting him in trade because of course he was such a talented pitcher and I really wanted him. So here's the trade that I made. I gave up my star center fielder, Juan Herrera, who was just coming off a year in which he was injured, but obviously he had been putting up 350 batting averages pretty much consistently up until that point. He was fast on the base paths. He had a lot of triples. Uh, overall, he was extremely valuable. He had high defense. He was a very solid center fielder. I believe this was just, oh, this was an international pitcher that I acquired. He spent, I think he spent a little more than this. Okay, so he actually only did pitch two years with us. He pitched a very excellent season, and I assume he was injured this year as well. So then I traded him away in this move as well. And a lower tier prospect, so I was essentially shedding depth in this. I'm assuming at this point I had my uh, center field prospects coming up and this would have got rid of cash and also of course netted me the superstar pitcher. So this guy is actually one of the best first basemen in the league right now. I kind of regret trading him but he was of course uh, not as valuable at the time and getting somebody of this talent level obviously you're going to give up pretty much whatever it takes. So I got my number two pitcher in trade as well. Generally speaking, what I would suggest is trade for all of the really good players that you can see. It's going to improve your team in the long term, get prospects while they're young. Okay, so it looks like this guy is a really, oops, good fastball. That is not what I wanted to do. Yeah, okay, so he had a really good fastball. He was not a great pitcher with us, and it looks like he wasn't too great after the trade either, except this one season in 2046. He was pretty good. I believe this would have been another potential center fielder for me back in the time it looks like he played part of one season with us and then i traded him away and then this this is probably not the guy i gave up uh but yeah essentially two good players and a worthless player again these guys Except for Ulola, who may have actually been more talented potential-wise when I acquired him than he is now, most of these players developed beyond their potential at where it was when I traded for them. For example, let's pull up the scouting on Luis Ruelas. I acquired him in 2040, so we're looking for his 2040 scouting report. Yeah, at this point, he was rising. He would have been about a four-star pitcher when I got him, and then he improved to this after I traded for him. Then we have Ernesto Ocampo, who was another trade in the same year. Ooh, we gave up a lot. This guy was one of my better pitchers at the time. I remember him. He obviously declined quickly. This guy was a pitching prospect that was up and coming, but he could not develop his third pitch, so he ended up as a reliever. This guy was one of my... He was a really, really star-level first baseman for me at the time. I think these guys were pretty much just relatively meaningless prospect. At, oh, this guy was, I believe, a utility guy for me. That never made it to the big leagues. Ocampo would have been more expensive to acquire. Juan Castillo was actually a draft pick. 
So I would have traded for that 2043 first round draft pick and used it to pick up Castillo. Clarous Falto also from the Angels, so it looks like they're building my rotation for me. Here's this guy has been a really good first baseman for a long time, definitely one of the best in the league. As you can see, he was coming off 6.8 and 5.3 WAR in the last two years. He was on a team-friendly deal, so he would have been a little bit heart-wrenching to give up. A first base prospect, another pitching prospect, not nearly as talented as Falto, but still quite good, uh, and then a couple less valuable players. Obviously, the first baseman is the centerpiece of that trade. Another pitcher from the Angels, Juan Bustamante, came over. We only gave it one player to get him, who would have been a pretty solid starting pitcher for us, Kevin Abrahamson. But of course, teams value relief prospects less, so getting Bustamante would not have been as difficult. Oh, I got Gilberto Duenas and Ken Rich in the same trade, actually. He would have probably just been an add-in, as Duenas almost certainly is what drew me to make this trade. Wit Music was coming off an outstanding rookie year. As you can see, he's still a top-tier pitcher. Excellent stuff. Above-average movement control. Ground baller. High stamina. He keeps his runners on the base. He was... Probably tough to give up, but of course my rotation was getting loaded at the time, so I didn't have any major need for him. And this guy is not the guy I traded away. He would have probably just been a throw-in, the player that I actually did give up. Just a little bit of something extra to acquire Rich. Glover was a first-round pick that I actually did not have to trade for, apparently. So I just picked him up with uh, my own draft pick. Mendolf also a draft pick, sixth round. It looks like we also got Walters through trade. Well, it looks like this right fielder didn't really pan out, but he is a captain. All right, so in this trade, we gave up an overpaid reliever who was probably, oh no, he was just a reliever that they were interested in, apparently. Another reliever of little interest. So this was just a cheap, we acquired Jim Walters very cheaply. Moselle was a draft pick, late first rounder as well. So my bullpen largely built through draft picks. My rotation largely built through trades. Carnes Galli was a rule five draft pick. He's the number seven overall prospect and the Padres left him unprotected. So of course I jumped and grabbed him. He's likely going to be trade bait in the long run, but for this year, I'm just trying to build up his overall ratings a little bit more by using him out of the bullpen. Chris McConnell, another draft pick. Jim Comstock, another draft pick. Ben Stutz, I, I think I got him really cheaply. He was an outstanding catching prospect, and the Rays just did not want much for him. Yeah, one guy. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a decent left fielder, but getting a super, super star catcher for that is just a complete robbery. I acquired him in 2039. So he was already a very high potential catcher by that point. Actually, let's check Robles. I believe he was a trade where I was just picking up a high catcher ability guy. Yeah, so I was giving up this catcher because he was more arm-based for this guy who's more catcher ability-based. And I was also grabbing this left-field prospect, Juan Castillo. 
who obviously high speed, uh, interesting contact skill, and he will probably end up in left or right field. In this trade, we also gave up a borderline useless center fielder and a borderline useless pitcher. Mike Todd was definitely a trade acquisition. I believe he was pretty cheap too. So we got Mike Todd, this third baseman who we traded away. And a shortstop prospect who's still with us. Ooh, he's interesting. He could definitely end up at, I'm thinking third base is probably his long-term destination with that arm and range. But he's got an interesting contact tool as well. We gave up, oh yeah, my backup catcher, who I got, I believe, through international signing. He did not have the same defensive abilities as Stutz, and he was a lesser hitter overall, so I was willing to trade him away. I believe this shortstop was a utility guy. No, he was just a shortstop that was never going to crack my roster. And a bunch of throw-ins. Oh, Jadon Sase. He was my first baseman for two years. But, of course, I was planning on using Todd at first since I already had Dwayne Oss to play third. So... It didn't matter that I was giving up my first baseman. Rennie was an international free agent signing, as I believe Molina was as well. So they were both just incredibly talented from a young age and developed. Yeah, the funny thing is Rennie came up as a center fielder. In his first year, he was my starting center fielder. See, 109 games started in center field. And he was above average defensively. So obviously impressive there, but I moved him to second base as that was my position of greater long-term need. Duenas was obviously that trade with Oakland where we got Ken Rich. Rodolfo Razzo with his, a trade with the Mets. Now when I traded for Razzo, he was not quite as good as he was, but he was a five-tool hitter with outstanding defense and obviously was going to be a superstar already. And then he improved upon his potential from the time that I traded for him to where he is now. I believe he is also my longest tenured player other than perhaps Tatsuo Tomura. Okay, so as you can see, I gave up a whole bunch. Chris Faust was my leading center, or one of my leading center field prospects. He was quite good for the Mets for many years. Josh Guerra would have been a pretty solid first baseman for them for quite a while. Rodolfo Herrera was a good relief pitcher at the time. Yeah, a very good relief pitcher. Probably on an expiring contract. And Danny McCulloch would have been another center field prospect. So I gave up a load of prospects for Rodolfo Razo, who was somehow only the number nine prospect in the league. And hold it one time. Okay, I acquired him in 2035. So yeah, he was only a four-star potential prospect at the time. All around a good hitter with top-notch defense or defensive ability. And then he only continued to improve from there. So as you can see, the trend is generally that I acquire the top-tier talents and then they continue to develop even beyond where their potential would have been with my team. You're going to see a lot of high work ethic intelligence. That's generally why my players end up being so good. Juan Laureano, another international free agent signing. We got lots of those. I landed a lot of lucky ones. Oh, actually, looks like Molina was a trade acquisition. But anyways, I landed several consecutive years of very high potential international free agent prospects who ended up being incredibly talented. Looks like we got a reliever as well who ended up not panning out. Oh, Chris Wiley was an interesting prospect. He was somewhat similar to Whit Muse, or he was a very high stuff, one-year plug-in. Eric Wilkinson was a backup catcher who was pretty solid for me. Mike Moffat, obviously a really talented reliever. Sergio Serna, yeah, this was just giving up a whole bunch of really talented pieces for Molina and a throw-in. And Molina, of course... He's not done developing. He already is capable of putting up his numbers last year where he was 
a 268, 360, 589 hitter with 50 home runs and gold glove caliber defense at center field. Plus, he's a really solid base runner. And he still has 25 avoid Ks to develop. Once he gets to that point, this outlandish 191 strikeouts is going to drop closer to 150, maybe even lower than that. And you're going to see Molina absolutely go to town offensively. He probably has a ceiling even higher than Razzo, which is absolutely ridiculous to think about. Tatsuo Tamura, trade with the Phillies. Let's see about this one. So we got Brad Harthen. Brad Harthen, guys. Brad Harthen was the centerpiece of this trade. I desperately needed a third baseman. And he was coming off an MVP year where he was absolutely outstanding. Then he produced outstanding years for me. Two unbelievably good offensive seasons. He slugged 662 here. He had an on-base percentage of 400. He batted 300. He hit 60 home runs, or 120, between his two seasons with us, and put up 16 war. And then I don't know what I got in the trade for him. I'm sure we'll find out. So Tamura was a throw-in in the Brad Hartham trade. He was not the centerpiece of his trade. He just developed into a superstar outfielder. So in this trade, we gave up. Oh, we gave up Mike Pinkston. So he would have been on an expiring or overpaid contract. Yeah, he would have been getting paid a lot. This would have been to decrease cash. Juan Ventura would have been just a random center field prospect. Jorge Miranda would have been my starting catcher at the time. He would have been pretty good, I think. Or at least I think he was my starting catcher. No, he was an up-and-coming catcher that I wasn't using as my starter. Zach Greinke Jr., guys. Zach Greinke Jr. was a legitimate center field prospect. He's been very good defensively, high contact. He's put up plenty of really good years in the majors, led the league in steals twice, led the league in hits once. That's 6.0 war year. Really great season for him. All right, let's figure out exactly how Tamura developed after being acquired. So he was 18. He was a high-risk, high potential outfielder when we got him in 2038. So he was a three-star potential outfielder when we acquired him. He had... Actually, he had about the same ratings as he does now. Okay, so I guess it just misevaluated his overall talent. We acquired him cheap, and he came up and really produced for us. I mean, if we want to check his fielding stats, he was a center fielder for a while. So he came up as a left fielder. He shifted to center field in 2045, presumably after we traded our center fielder in the uh, Luis Ulola trade. He was pretty bad in center field his first year. Oh, I guess he really only did play that one year in center field. Huh. I could have sworn I had him in there for two years, but maybe he just spent the whole year developing and never actually became a super talented center fielder. And I cannot believe how lucky I've been with Fergoso. Because he has no defensive ability, like he isn't even really good enough to play first base well. He was extremely easy to pick up. I got him with my natural first round draft pick. And he developed into a stud hitter. I cannot believe a bat of this talent was available at the bottom of the first round. And then, of course, he signed a 10-year extension for $5 million a year with me. And I have a feeling he's going to be cheap to retain past that as our designated hitter. Nobody strikes out less than Fergoso. He has solid tools across the board outside of his avoid Ks. The guy is just an absolute beast. Now, Pat Davis. How did we get Pat Davis? He was a fourth-round draft pick, so he would have been a glove-first guy that developed his uh, hitting tools to a level where he's livable as a utility guy. Yeah, looks like that's the case. Silvino Herrero, 
trade with the Dodgers, he would have been another high potential outfielder that I didn't really, yeah, he was a throw in. I was getting draft picks in this trade and cash, or I was getting draft picks. I threw in Herrero because I liked him. I was giving up Luis Lazo, who was a pretty good outfielder for me that I didn't really need because of my depth and that guy. So let's see how he developed after 2046. He wasn't even a top 100 prospect. How was he not a top 100 prospect? Look at that potential. He was already a four-star guy. He had outstanding power and solid tools across the board outside of that. Herrero's power-speed combination is something I haven't seen since uh, a left fielder in my early days named Luis Pardo. I believe that's my entire Major League team, so now let's check out the minors. Juan Castillo, I believe we've already done, yes. Chris Fallon, so my ace in the hole, he's going to soon join our rotation. He has really high stuff, good movement, and about average control. We also got him from the Aztecs, he was recent. So we gave up a shortstop prospect who's really quite good but of course is not going to outdo the other shortstop prospects that we have. And then of course, he's also got to beat Razzo. Luis Fitzpaldi. So he would have been a nice outfield prospect. Luis Gamma. So that's the third baseman I got from the Yankees. Skyler Buss was a rule five draft pick, but of course, since my outfield was so crowded, he wasn't going to win a starting role. Obviously he's a really talented outfielder as well. And Juan Mendoza, another high potential outfielder. So I gave up quite the package to acquire this guy. He was not cheap. I probably should not have paid that much for him, but he is just so talented. I wasn't going to let him pass. Arnas Galli, of course, was a rule five draft pick. Falto, we've already seen him with the Angels. Uh, Rosales, trade with the Giants. Look at that. Oh my goodness. You know, I take it back. This guy's the best pitcher in the system. He's a ground baller with slightly below average movement. Top shelf stuff, throws 100 miles an hour, and his control is really solid too. So I had to give up a pitching prospect who's pretty solid in Brad Bowser. He was a draft pick. And center fielder Juan Lemus, who was a prospect that was never going to... Oh, that's right, he was getting expensive, that was a problem. I had a choice between certain players that I could extend, and I just simply could not afford Lemus. We still Sid, another trade acquisition. As you can see, his defense is almost on par with Razzo's. His hit tools aren't quite as pronounced, but they are still very solid. He's basically like your cheaper version of Razzo. He's an all-round very good hitter, elite defensive shortstop. So we also got that first baseman. We gave up a worthless third base prospect. Some random pitching prospect who clearly didn't pan out. Another random pitching prospect. That guy. Yeah, so we gave up a whole bunch of nothing. And a first round draft pick for Del Cid. Juan Laureano, obviously we've seen him. Ignacio Marino. So I actually acquired a couple of high potential outfielders on the cheap side. He is in a similar boat to uh, Fragoso. He simply does not have the range to play the field. He might actually be capable of starting at first base, but he is not a good enough outfielder. So let's see how I got him exactly. So I got him cash and a first round draft pick. I gave up Lamberto Romero. So this guy was my uh, designated hitter for a long time. Then Fergoso came up and he had to play the field again. That's right. It was a choice between Lamberto Romero and the other guy. And I chose the other guy. No, I don't know how I got rid of him. 
But this guy was a high power, high on base percentage player for a very long time. His lowest on base percentage season is still that 424. Absolutely outstanding career for getting on. And of course, he hits a lot of homers too. He's consistently in the 40s. He's been in the 30s lately. All around, very talented player. He hits 300. His wars have been way up there. Uh, yeah, he's been a DH left fielder his career. So that was actually quite a expensive acquisition for us. But we did also pick up that first round pick. I'm assuming that's part of it. Talbot Paradis, another really high ability pitcher for us. He was getting expensive, and we had to choose between him and our younger pitchers. And he just had a down year, so I was pretty much done with him. And Jeff Bays, who appears to have been a relief pitching prospect. Didn't really pan out all that well. Oh no, he was a starting pitching prospect. So he's actually still got a chance to be a half-decent starter. Tim Eicher, I believe, is the other, or one of the other outfielders that I acquired cheaply. So I got him in a second-round draft pick for a left fielder who's okay, a relief pitcher who's okay, and a nobody center fielder. Dadswell was a draft pick. He was originally a shortstop. I've moved him to second because he's no way going to crack the roster over Brazo. And of course, he can just move back to shortstop if we need. The odds are eventually he will be a starter for us, but I'm not exactly sure what that'll look like. It'll probably be for a year and he'll be traded. He just isn't talented enough, not quite, for him to be an actual starter. Herrera, trade with Cincinnati. So we got him a first rounder and a second rounder and cash for Josh Henderson, who was a first baseman. I don't remember him, but he's been quite good. Oh no, in triple A, he's been quite good. He's still in triple A. Steve Sowell, who is a center field prospect that I got back. Don't even ask me how I got him back. And another center field prospect. So I basically gave up a this guy's defense. I gave up that guy's defense for a first rounder, a second rounder, and Luis Herrera. Who is simply much better than the guys I gave up. He's likely going to be a left fielder in the long run. But his contact skill is pretty solid and he can hit for power. Ah, Figura. This is another guy I got cheaply from the Pirates. I'm pretty sure I gave up pretty much nothing to get him. Jeremy Holiday would have been a... Oh, I did give up something. But we also got a first-round draft pick. So Jeremy Holiday would have been a center field prospect for me. Looks like he played one year, but obviously I had better options, so I chose to not keep him on the roster. Andy Mulder, another pitching prospect. I could have sworn... Okay, so he would have been a cheap acquisition then. First round draft pick, him and this reliever who I traded to the Reds. I got that closer. No, they got that closer. This pitcher and this third... So they were willing to essentially sell their souls for this reliever, which I can understand, but he was getting expensive and I didn't really need him. Dan Meadows, he's getting a little bit old. We're going to have to trade him away, I think. He would have been a cheaper acquisition as well. So we got him in this second base prospect, who I actually like better than him. Interesting contact skill there. We gave up Tim Eicher. So we apparently gave them Tim Eicher and then got him back. And this first baseman. Juan Vera, he was an international free agent signing. I believe 
just this last year, maybe the year before. Yeah, the la this guy was last year's international free agent signing. He's probably going to be a first baseman, but he has outstanding contact and above average tools across the board as well. So he's essentially got the ceiling of our best hitters or best contact hitters right now. Danny Glover, you know him, first round draft pick. Jeff Hoffman, another first rounder. Nice four pitch arsenal, high movement, extreme ground baller. A uh, little bit below average control. He's probably not going to be a starter for us in the long run, but we will see what we will do about him. Ismael Trejo, another international free agent signing. Nice power and eye. Okay contact. Good catcher ability. He's likely a trade ship. Luis Amaya, and I have apparently... 19 top 100 prospects despite the fact that there's 40 something teams i think there's exactly 40 so he's a good second baseman who might end up at third base he can play pretty much any infield position not sure where his long-term spot's going to be really nice contact tool his eye and power aren't super great but he is nonetheless capable of being a decent starter and our last top 20 prospect is of course silvino herrero who we've seen already. So guys, that's it. That's my entire team's build. Obviously, I've got some more extremely talented players around that are not in my top 20, but by and large, uh, why is this guy such a highly rated first base prospect? Anyways, now that I'm done being distracted, you can see that we have built a really talented team. This is largely just through me cycling around talent when my players get expensive, I trade them away. When my tra players come to the end of their contracts or careers, I trade them away. I don't bother keeping players that I don't need. I sell players who aren't my best options. And ultimately, it nets me top tier talent that I can use to acquire more talent after they've played their careers for me. The only player I don't think I'm going to move is Rodolfo Razo. But otherwise, I'm willing to trade anybody. And that's how I got the team I got. If you're interested in more about how I build my teams, I have other videos I will link into the chat. And of course, if you're interested in this game and how it performs, you can continue watching my undefeated series. Thanks for watching, guys.